earlier on during our discussion, we spoke about biodiversity, referring to it as the degree of variation among living organisms. Now, I would like to talk to you a bit more on the levels of biodiversity. Biodiversity is at the macroscopic level and they can be divided into three different levels. One being ecosystem diversity, two, species diversity, and the third is genetic diversity. Let us first look at what is ecosystem diversity. Or maybe I should first define what is an ecosystem before we look at ecosystem diversity. Now an ecosystem is an area that contains organisms, example plants, animals, bacteria, interacting with one another and more importantly interacting with their living uh, with their non-living environment so they interact with one another and also interact with their non-living environment ecosystem can be of any size small big and examples of ecosystems can be a mangrove ecosystem a forest ecosystem an ocean ecosystem, a desert ecosystem, and obviously a mangrove and a forest ecosystem would have larger diversity as compared to a desert ecosystem. Now therefore, ecosystem diversity would refer to the variety of habitats, biological communities, and the ecological processes that occur within that ecosystem. Now the second is species diversity. This simply looks at the variety or the number of living organisms present within the biosphere. Estimates or scientists have estimated that there are about 5 to 50 million or more species present in this biosphere. And out of this, only about 1.7 million or about 13% have been identified and described. This means that there is a huge potential out there to be discovered and to be utilized. Look at this a diagram or look at the table that is displayed. It shows the group of living organism and number of species that have been described. Picking on one or two large and important groups, for example, angiosperms, or groups of flowering plants, there are 250,000 species that, that have been described. Insects constitute the largest described species with 751,000. There are more than 19,000 of described fish species. There are many other groups such as bacteria, fungi, protozoa, uh, invertebrates, reptiles and others which you can see the numbers on the screen. The third is a genetic diversity. Now genetic diversity refers to variation between individuals of the same species. Now to give a simple example which makes sense to all of us is by looking at the species Homo sapiens or human beings. Just look around you. You will see that among you, which we can call as a population, there are variations. And this 
when compared between populations, for example, among the Indians, the Europeans, uh, Asians, you can see there are distinct variation. This is what we call as genetic diversity. Now, of course, that was not an agriculture example. Now, similarly, in agriculture, if we take rice, for example, you will see that a huge variation among rice varieties. Glutinous, non-glutinous, long grain, short, short grain, etc. Now, a great amount of variations are found in natural populations and this is due to random breeding as well as mutation. I hope that up to now I have given you an overview or explained to you what a diversity means and what is genetic resources and I think at this point, I would like to pose a question. Why is genetic diversity important? Why is biodiversity important? Now, if you have been following this discussion carefully, you would be able to say that biodiversity is important because Biodiversity affects human need for survival by being the source of food, medicine, water, air, shelter and many others. Now you would also have realised that species and ecosystem has evolved over millions of years into a complex interdependence. Now, removal of any element on which the framework is based may result in collapse of the ecosystem. Therefore, biodiversity has to be conserved. Now, this is a must in order to maintain our own life support system. Let us now talk about the two main conservation strategies. Right? One is in situ conservation, which means on site conservation. It is a process of protecting an endangered plant or animal species in its natural habitat. Now, this method of conservation will also conserve ecosystem effectively. For example, this can be done through declaration of forest area as designated permanent forest reserve. Now, the second method is called ex situ method. Ex situ method means off-site conservation. Now, it is a process of protecting an endangered species of plant or animal by removing part of the population from a threatened habitat and placing it in a new location within the care of humans. Now, this is often done in the form of gene banks, seed banks, DNA banks, in vitro banks, and so on. Now, there are a large number of worldwide collection of plants, animals, and bacteria germplasm. Just to give you an example, Erie or International Rice Research Institute located in Manila, Philippines, is the custodian or the caretaker of the rice gene bank. This gene bank houses more than 4 million accession of rice varieties. 
there are many other gene banks and if you are interested, you will, can find out further on this. Now, genetic resources or those collections that are being maintained in the gene banks are not just for show. They can be utilised in order to improve genetic resources by using them in breeding programmes in order to create new genotypes, new varieties. Now, breeders often use these materials to increase yield, to look for pest and disease resistance, and also to look for ecological tolerance as some of the main traits. Of course, there are many other traits that are being looked at by breeders. Now, take an example of a tomato. The cultivated tomatoes are prone to many pests and diseases. Wild relatives have been found to be resistant to at least 32 major tomato dis uh, diseases that have been discovered in the cultivated variety. So therefore, this example, I hope, will give you an idea as to how genetic diversity, genetic resources, wild relative can play a role in assisting agriculture to look for traits which are advantageous. Now, in talking about conservation of genetic resources, we cannot run away from mentioning biodiversity hotspots. Now, hotspots are sites where many types of biological organisms exist and constitute invaluable genetic resources. They contain high variety of life forms that inhibit the earth. They contain high range of number of species and high variety of life. Now, this diagram shows 25 hotspots of the world. And conservation efforts are normally Focus on these hotspot areas because they constitute a large number of species diversity, which also constitute a large a genetic variation among them. Now, having spoken about the importance of biodiversity, there is one last issue that I would like to discuss with all of you, which is threat to diversity and the loss of genetic resources. There are various causes that are threatening diversity at the moment. One very important uh, threat to diversity is habitat loss. Habitat loss is mainly due to anthropogenic reason, right? Meaning to say that habitat loss to a very large extent is due to, due to human where we have now destroyed a lot of the natural resources in order to replace with construction and due to deforestation. This is also related to tremendous increase in population and as population increase, we need more space, we need more resources. Now, other than habitat loss, pollution is a cause that is threatening biodiversity. Now, pollution here includes atmospheric pollution, water pollution, pesticide, heavy metal pollution, so on and so forth. Overconsumption and unsustainable use is another contributing factor 
towards biodiversity loss. Of course, there are many other reasons. Domestication and use of modern varieties is also a contributing factor, whereby use of hybrids and modern varieties have resulted in loss of many older varieties. There are many other reasons for threat to biodiversity loss. Of course, we can talk about the consequence of biodiversity loss and we can also discuss on measures to try and overcome this. However, I would like to leave this to you to ponder and wonder what is your contribution in biodiversity conservation. Now remember one major issue that threatens the whole world today is climate change and global warming, which is highly and closely related to the issues that we have discussed earlier, issues that relate to biodiversity threat. Now, with that, I, uh, with that, I think I have given you a brief insight into biodiversity, the importance of biodiversity, genetic resources, the importance of genetic resources in agriculture, and also the importance of agriculture to humans. Therefore, humans play an important role to ensure that biodiversity is conserved and taken care simply for the survival of humanity. With that, I thank you.